It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The dress code for police women has been generating a lot of conversation. This morning, we look at the legality of all of this. Now, finally, a Nigerian police force uh, have joined her counterparts in Canada, United States of America, Sweden, Turkey, Australia, and the United Kingdom, among others, uh, to have a code for dressing. Now, this is as the IGP Usman Akali approves a new dress code for female personnel of the force. The code allows female personnel to wear stored earrings and heads carved under the beret or pick cabs as the case may be while in uniform. However, the dress code is optional. This is according to the Inspector General of Police and senior female police officers have been taxed by the IGP to ensure compliance with the approved standard for women police officers who have opted uh, to adopt all of this. You also have on the country a senior advocate of Nigeria, Adegbo Ruwa, who has described the new dress code for female police officers as illegal. Now, according to him, the new dress code of Nigeria police uh, is ultra variant and should be re reversed. And uh, this morning, we take a look at the constitutionality of the dress code for police officers. We do have uh, Mr. Richard. Wakotra, who joins the conversation this morning. He's a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us, Mr. Richard. Thank you. So um, um, let's share your thoughts on this now. You already, um, with this new dress code that's been put out, you have uh, Adek Barua, who's actually put out his thoughts as well. And he said this is actually illegal and that the police should consider, the police force should consider uh, changing and reversing this new dress code. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I agree with Tade on, uh, on this issue. Um, no matter how good the intention uh, of the IGP, uh, the action he has taken is a bit beyond his powers and uh, in the sense that it violates some sections of the constitution. So that makes it uh, an action that raises constitutional questions. So I would outright, outrightly say it's unconstitutional. You have um, section 10 of the constitution, which he points out, and that is true. Uh, the section enjoins the Nigerian state to ensure that the military maintains uh, neutrality. The military, the police, and uh, public agencies maintain neutrality uh, in terms of religion. And so it's not at all uh, necessary to reflect religion in, um, in public uh, offices. I agree in some countries you have uh, all of that, but your constitution says you are to maintain neutrality. As a matter of fact, religion is, a, is a, what we call personal law. It's part of personal law. It's, your religion is your personal affair. It is what influences your reasoning and um, how just or how fair uh, you treat people or react to situations. It's absolutely private. Uh, it's not what you wear on uh, your face in the public space. No, it's not. And so it violates Section 10. It's military, including the police. Um, and there is questions um, concerning Section 42 of the Constitution. I was going to uh, put that is, to you. I guess. Hmm. Just go Hello? ahead. Yeah, so I said I was going to, if you say that it contravenes Section 10 of the Constitution, uh, what happens to Section 42? Uh, just as you were already mentioning, that, yeah. that prohibits Se discrimination. For, yeah, Section 42 ensures that, or uh, asks the Nigerian state to ensure that nobody is discriminated against as a result of his gender, um, religion, uh, where he comes from, or circumstances of his uh, life and all that. Absolutely all right. But you see, what it raises concerning the, the invalidity it raises concerning Section 42, is that you have recognized a uniform that belongs to a religion. Automatically, you have discriminated against other religions and the police. So instead of providing for wearing of hijab, you should have provided for police officers to reflect their religion and their dressing, and that would have been general. But when you specifically provide for only one, then you have discriminated against the others. How about the Catholic woman who will want to wear um, uh, some Catholic apparel? who want to wear her rosary on her uniform. You've not provided for that. How about the traditional religionists who will want to play some charms, wear some charms on his or her neck, or place some of them in the pocket or pin them to the uniform? You haven't provided for that. So if you want to provide for expression of religion, provide for expression of religion. 
generally, and not one. For in providing for one, you have discriminated against the others. Uh, ear stud and uh, earrings are not uh, religious artifacts. And so what you have provided is recognition of one religion without recognizing the other religions. Earrings has nothing to do with the other religions. So if you want to recognize religion which violates Section 10, then you should recognize all religions so that people of all religions can wear whatever um, appeals to them according to their religion on their uniform. Mm -hmm. So it creates discrimination, <coughs> excuse me, in providing for one religion, expression of one religion without providing for expression of other religions. All right, so, but uh, in your thoughts, as a lot of Nigerians are questioning as well, uh, do you think that with all of the issues that the Nigerian police force is faced with and the insecurity issue, uh, should we be paying attention to the issue of uh, the dress code? How does this help the fight against <coughs> crime and criminality? Uh, we, I think we are actually living up to expectation. Um, uh, we have established a long history and culture of... Uh, of um, creating new problems uh, instead of solving existing problems. Uh, we just invent something uh, which will be completely unrelated to the challenges we are facing and which will in no way help the challenges we are facing. As a nation, our airways was not doing well. We thought it was the logo. We changed it from flying elephant to flying ego and it died completely. Our police was not doing well. We changed the uniform. The uniform has not changed the police. We are still in search of solution. And so in the face of extreme helplessness of the police uh, and the severe um, crisis of security we are having in the country, we are wearing hijab. How does that address any of the problems that the Nigerian police forces use is facing? It's not going to increase funding. It's not going to improve conditions, condition of service. It's not going to ensure that they are better protected uh, when they face criminals uh, which are bound in Nigeria. It's not going to solve any, absolutely, I say, absolutely any of the existing problems. So what the IGP has just done is probably create another problem to create some distraction so that we lose focus on uh, the real problems that the Nigerian police uh, is facing and uh, debate a bit on the non-issue that he has introduced. It solves no problem, it adds to our problem. If it does not solve a problem, and it's causing a debate, then it's adding to our problem. Hmm. So um, just like you have mentioned, this would further you know, create more problems and further divide us as a country. Now, uh, what happens to those who feel discriminated? I mean, those who feel that their religion has been discriminated and, and they haven't been carried along, uh, what can they do? What is going to happen moving forward? I, I think what they should do is um, try to get the police to stay focused on its mandate. And that is by challenging the action of the IGP and pointing out that it violates Section 10 of the Constitution. It's not necessary uh, to find that we should all have our religions reflected. What the IGP has done is unconstitutional. And everywhere meaning uh, citizen <clears throat> should work towards compelling the IGP to comply with the Nigerian Constitution, which is the highest law of the land. So, but uh, let's just digress away from the dress code now. Now, looking at the police, uh, following the uh, protest that actually happened, the issue of extortion, because we know that that's still um, a case that's still ongoing in our country where you have people uh, being brutalized, I mean, badly manhandled in the course of discharging their duties. And there was a protest that happened hashtag and, you know, police brutality. Now, majorly, uh, one of the recommendations and one of the things that the Ni Nigerian citizens have asked is that there be a reform in the entire police sector. And one would be hoping that we just have these reforms coming very quick and very fast. But um, moving uh, forward as a people, what would you say that the Nigerian police can quickly do right now? And, uh, there's a lot uh, to rede redeem her image uh, from all of the issues that she has got herself into, and how can the government help? Uh, what one expects the police to do is to face the challenges uh, we have. There are, there are, you can classify the challenges into two. Uh, there are challenges facing the police and affecting the ability of the police to discharge its mandate to the, to the nation and to its citizens. And there are challenges um, from the police affecting citizens, which gives them bad image. Now, 
I can't stop you from uh, misusing your uniform and abusing citizens. That is something you need to stop yourself from doing. And we expect that the police will come up with some kind of reform, which should teach the Nigerian police that they are no longer the colonial police that they were at foundation, that they are a national police and an institution that belongs to a sovereign state whose mandate and critical responsibility or core responsibility is the protection of citizens and providing for peaceful environment for citizens to do their business. That is their core mandate. So we expect that we'll have reform that will change the orientation of the Nigerian police officer and make him realize proudly that he is at the service of the citizens to protect the citizens and not the reverse. Uh, where he sees the citizen as a bloody civilian to be dealt with and to protect every criminal in the police force and the police uniform uh, uh, in, in, the, in the spirit of uh, esprit de corps uh, to protect them no matter the crime they commit. That needs to stop. Those are the reforms we are expecting. And we expect them also to make appropriate contacts to convince the Nigerian state, like citizens have done and the youths have done in the protests we talked about, uh, we do appreciate your time. We seem to have a disconnect uh, with the uh, uh, culture. Police funding. Uh, Richard Wakacha, we, we have to let you go at this point. Thank you so much for being part of the show. Uh, we seem to be having uh, some network connection issues, but we really do appreciate your time uh, with us this morning on The Breakfast, and we look forward to having more of you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right, Richard Wakacha is a public affairs analyst. He's sharing his thoughts on uh, the constitutionality of uh, the legality, if you like to say, of the new uh, dress code for police officers in Nigeria. And he's rightly uh, aligned with the likes of Adigbo who was saying it's unconstitutional and it's illegal and that the police force should focus, uh, pay attention to the fight against crime and criminality. And that's the size of uh, the show this morning. And it's been a great time, two hours of fantastic conversation. We look forward to having uh, you tomorrow. Time is seven to nine o'clock. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. I am Messi Boko. And if you missed that on any part of the show, Sure, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as a Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Uh, have a fantastic day.